Hello brain lovers, Gregory here from the Brain Academy. Now the other day I had a fight with Gurk. You know, broader stuff. So at one point I kindly referred to him as psychopath. And he returned the favor by saying, that makes you a sociopath. So then I went like, hey, wait, uh, isn't that the same? And he went, oh, you ignorant fool. So today we're going to talk about the difference between psychopaths and sociopaths. Do you know the difference? No? Well, you soon will. Okay, we're gonna need Gurk for this. Um, there's a lot of confusion about the terms psychopath and sociopath. They're used interchangeably by some and depending on the authors you'll end up with different definitions. So why isn't there one single definition? Well, because officially there is no such thing as psychopathy or a sociopathy. You won't find them in the DSM-5, the Bible of Psychiatric Disorders. What we get is the overarching ASPD, Antisocial Personality Disorder, which basically covers both. And yes, both have a lot in common. ASPD main characteristics are, and I quote, a pervasive pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others. So it's a pattern, not a one-time thing. It's not because someone did something once that he or she has an antisocial personality disorder, but it goes further as it also includes violation of social norms and laws. So they do illegal or immoral things. Also, deceitful, repeated lying, even conning for pleasure or profit. So they actually enjoy, get pleasure out of whatever it is they're doing. And last, a lack of remorse or empathy, or very, very little of it. The other is seen as a tool, as a mean to an end. And to them, whatever they did, the other deserved it. They had it coming. They might even consider themselves some kind of Robin Hood or fighting the system. Except they keep the money for themselves and their victims are just ordinary everyday people. Anyway, that's what they have in common. There are more things, but I'm trying to keep things easy and under control here. But wait, it's getting better. So now we know what psychopaths and sociopaths have in common, let's see what distinguishes them from one another. So the psychopath usually works alone, while the sociopath, on the other hand, works in team. The psychopath is calculated. He can develop very sophisticated plots to trick his victims, like a spider, you know, patiently waiting for his or her victim to get entangled in their web. The sociopath, on the other hand, is much more impulsive, reckless even. Which brings me to the last point. The sociopath, due to his or her recklessness, acts without taking into account consequences. They just go for it whenever a situation presents itself. That's why they are easier to identify and get caught. That's why they have a hard time also to keep their job as they always end up in trouble. As a consequence, they're often not that well off, socioeconomically speaking. The psychopath, on the other hand, is a master in disguise. They are often well-educated, can be very charming, have a well-paid job. From the outside, there's nothing wrong with them. And as they plan everything, they cover their tracks and will have an alibi. An interesting recent finding shows that psychopaths seem to have a genetic component where the part of the brain responsible for empathy is less developed. Sociopaths, on the other hand, aren't born but made. They usually had a rough childhood, including physical abuse or worse, and as a consequence, lost all sense of morality and empathy. As adults, they frequently become substance abusers. An easy way to remember the difference between both is psychology is uh, the study of the human mind. It's, it's more on an individual level. Sociology is the study of society, of social groups. So the psychopath is the individual, cold and calculating. Whilst the sociopath is the more social, hot-headed, impulsive criminal. So let's see if you understand the difference between both. Let's play a game I like to call Psycho or Socio. And let's dig deep into our pop culture to find the most blatant examples. You'll get five seconds to decide whether the person is a psychopath or a sociopath. If you need more time, don't hesitate to pause the video, okay? So here we go. Let's start with a classic. Malcolm McDowell in A Clockwork Orange. He works in a team, he's impulsive, etc. He's a sociopath. Here's my card. 
Heath Ledger, who plays the Joker in The Dark Knight. We're tonight's entertainment. Impulsive, erratic behavior. Sure, he plans things, but improvises a lot. He's a sociopath. Oh. Kevin Spacey in Seven. Oh, everything is planned out and timed in the most gruesome manner. Nothing wrong with a man taking pleasure in his work. I won't deny my own personal desire to turn each sin against the sinner. Definitely a psycho. Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs. Total self-control, works alone, well-educated. Psycho. Adam Driver as Kylo Ren in the latest Star Wars trilogy. The scenes where he loses his calm gives it all away. He's a sociopath. Brad Pitt as Tyler Durden in Fight Club. Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. He's charming, plans everything, and has total self-control. Do not fuck with us. He's a psycho. But it doesn't always have to be cold-blooded killers, you know. Sociopathy and psychopathy alike are more like a continuum where serial killers are on one hand, but you don't need to kill to have an antisocial personality disorder. So what about Leonardo DiCaprio in uh, The Wolf of Wall Street? He loses his temper, has a whole gang of croonies. There's substance abuse. Yeah, he's a sociopath. And DiCaprio again, but this time in Catch Me If You Can. Intricate planning, whole cover-up, a master in disguise. He's a psycho. So on one extreme we have serial killers. On the other end, we have almost normal people. They will lie, manipulate and deceive for small or not so small stuff. And they are everywhere in our society. They can be your colleague or your boss, your neighbor or even your partner. If caught, they won't show remorse. And if they do, they're probably manipulating you again. Sounds familiar? Anybody around you who fits the description? Okay, and just because I like to f with your mind a little bit, let's explore one more thing. Pop culture has made superheroes into this huge thing. Everybody loves them, right? They are great for entertainment, but what if I told you that many of them show some serious signs of psychopathy? Take Batman, for example. I'm Batman. Master in disguise? Check. Well educated? Check. Charming? Check. Sophisticated alibi to cover his tracks? Check. Violation of social norms and laws? Check. He operates outside the law, remember? Now Batman is a total psycho. Same thing with Iron Man. He's charming, well-educated, etc. Remember how Robert Downey Jr. sees Scarlett Johansson for the first time. And what does he say? I want one. She's just an object for him. Oh, and by the way, Scarlett Johansson's character, Natasha Romanoff, total psycho also. Want some sociopaths? Okay, sure, be my guest. Here you go. Deadpool. Total sociopath. Or my personal favorite, Hancock. Impulsive, reckless, substance abuse, doesn't take into account consequences. Fellas, listen, give yourselves up quietly. Yep, he fits the description. And the fact that we as a society have a total fascination for these psycho and sociopaths, well, what can I say? <laughs> Carl Jung would have some really interesting thoughts on that. May I suggest group therapy? You know, to keep the cost down. Anyway, at least now you can differentiate between both. Who's the ultimate psycho or sociopath? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe, of course. We have new episodes of this vlog coming out every week. Check out some of our other episodes. And if you want the real stuff, you go to brainacademy.com. Join our 300,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen your mind.